I swear I did. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, right. Are we? Nice. All right. That is that. All right. That'll work. That'll work, baby. I love that wire chuck. It's the deal. It's the deal. It is the deal. All right. What on earth is that? All right, so we got what? There's LZRs for that. A couple pieces for that. I could probably just put this on here. What do you think? How are we coming there, Mr. J? Yeah, we're live? Super. All right, here we are. Hunter and I, we are in the penthouse. Back for another episode. Back for another episode. What did we say? We said that this was 58? Episode 58? Yeah. Wow. Whew. This, is, this is becoming like lethal weapon, you know, <laughs> where it's just... How many are they, they going to do of these? Um, so, yeah, we are on, what? We're on year four. Year four. And, uh, yeah, episode 58. It's been a heck of a run, and I love it. I love it's it. still going strong. I was going to say, you know, I think, I think we just continue to get better and better. You know, the, the team just continues to kill it, and it's, it's awesome. Now, speaking of that, I just want to go ahead and throw it out there and congratulate everyone that is in the, uh, you know, Mud Hole Live Rod Builders Workshop. And um, there, we got 10,000 members. 10,000. 10, I think we're up to, uh, I think Facebook's given it 10.1 now. So I think we're at, uh, you know, 10,137 or something. You know, some very obscure number. But we're over 10,000 and you had paid your credit card down, and we're going to be giving away the 10,000 member prize. That I is the... I have a uh, dead mic, guys. You got a dead mic? I think so. Well, you're not that important. Yeah. You know? Let me, uh, let me run real quick and fix this. How about that? Yeah. Get a new battery real You got quick. some batteries. All right, cool. I'll, uh, I'll do a dance while we're... So anyway, as I was saying... <clears throat> I'm going to put it on Hunter's credit card tonight, everybody. The 10,000 member prize is the limited edition RBS Pro with all black track and a four spool thread carriage. That is the TC4. You've seen us use it here. It's the deal. We, uh, we build a lot of stuff on it, and uh, it's awesome. I don't, I don't remember the value on that, but I think it's right around the $450, $500 mark. Yeah? Yeah. Hey, why not? Yeah, it's great, on you. great prize to win. It's on you. So fantastic. Plus, plus, talk about the other prizes we got going on tonight. Yeah, so of course we're gonna do the three giveaways as always, yep. plus the 10K winner. Yep. So our third place third place prize is the starter marbling kit. Mm -hmm. The uh, the runner-up is the professional marbling kit. And then our grand prize, as always, is a <clears throat> Not as always, but typically a rod kit. It's a CRB Color Series IS661 uh, with three of the Magic Marble uh, pigments that we're going to show later on. Nice. That is, that is awesome. All right, so what have you been up to? Anything, anything crazy? Nothing crazy. No, 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 not much. I know you guys had a, an awesome week last week. Uh, we little, did. A little spoiler alert there. Yes. Um, Yes. I'm sure we'll have some great content coming down the pipe pretty soon. So. Absolutely. You know, we've, we've trickled a little out here and there, but uh, we were. We were in the southern edge of Florida. You know, we were down there near Stewart, and, and we did uh, an entire host of things. You know, we had uh, a couple great guys we got to fish with. Um, shout out to Taylor and Guffy for catching their first sailfish ever. Yeah. Uh, they also took the plunge, so they uh, they held up a release flag and, and uh, 
went in the drink. So, which is very cool. Kind of one of those deals. It's uh, you know when you catch your first sailfish or you catch your first marlin. You know those. It's a big billfish thing, right? Yeah. So uh, they went in, and uh, we caught kingfish and bonita, and uh, we caught a couple of nice sharks off the beach at night, which is cool because uh, you know use the drone, flew the drone out. Yeah. Uh, you know, when, when you hear a 50 wide go off, when you hear that clicker going off in the dark, it's pretty menacing. It's pretty <laughs> cool. So, did some cool photo shoots. Uh, we even caught snook at night under the dock lights. I, I took the skiff down and uh, it was a ball. I mean, it, it was fun, but I tell you what, there were, that five days was, it wasn't long, but you know, it's 15, 16, 17 hour days. I mean, you know, one night we filched till, we fished till about four in the morning and then we were up at seven the next morning, you know, with, you know, cleaning the boat and short sleep and we just grinded. So yeah. it was, it was a cool team deal. Awesome. So, all right, what are we going to talk about tonight? So we're going to talk about marbling. So we had a couple really cool demos. We're going to go through the basics, start to finish on how to basic marbling, yep. right? Yep. We're going to talk about a few um, tips and tricks to how, to how to use color preserver to actually create very uh, distinct lines with your um, with your marbled finish. Yep, right? that's a very unique process, like yeah. you said. You know, and, and there is one color preserver that this works with, and we're going to show you on the show. Yep, uh, that, that's a great point. And of yep. course, uh, we got the candy jar out. Got the magic marble. That's it. So we're doing magic marble, and we're going to you know play with some cool stuff like this. Um, we might even we might even reach back here and get the bench cam out, show you some up close and personal Absolutely, stuff. Absolutely, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think? I think it's time to get this thing going. Let's do it, gentlemen. Is everybody ready? All right, let's hit it. There is nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. Let's do it. Episode 58. Hopefully everybody's joined in, ready to learn, ready to do some marbling. Uh, we're going to show a couple different techniques. Yeah. As Hunter said, we are going to use the CRB pigments. So this is pretty much just almost like a paint, right? So it, it is a liquid pigment. We are going to mix that into uh, whether you have Pro Coat, mm -hmm. whether you have Threadmaster, uh, any of your finish there. So Hunter's going to get some finish mixed up. I'm going to get some finish mixed up. We've got this here. We got the pigment. We've got the pearlescent powders. I don't even remember how many color options. I'm going to say it's over 20, 20 to 30 colors yeah. somewhere in that range. Yeah, th that this is a really really cool deal. There's a lot of cool colors. Um, you know that right there is is a very pretty blue. Um, there is, you know, we have purple and pearlescent and copper and silver and all kinds of stuff. I mean, absolutely all kinds of stuff. So we're going to do the pigments, we're going to show powders, and then of course in these little glass bottles here is the Magic Marble Swirling Paint to do some cool stuff like this. Uh, we got a, you know, a whole array of colors, yeah. if you will. You want to grab those two rods over there and just yeah. show... Uh, the, yeah, while you're mixing that. Show the effect we're going after here. For sure. These are obviously uh, done by a very, very good rod builder. Um, we're going to show something similar, maybe not as, uh, as great as this, yeah. but something similar. That's the effect we're going for. Yeah, so uh, this is just a section here above the foregrip where... Um, Victor Joseph has put in, you know, some trim bands here on either side of some marble, and that is using the pigments. So that's what we're going to start. That's what we're going to show you all first. And then, of course, we're also going to kind of walk you through out here on this guide. Uh, he actually did tied in the same colors, same color scheme, if you will, 
uh, put it as an, technically an under wrap there on that guide. It is a little bit hard to see um, because this is, you know, just a size seven or an eight. But you know, using something larger, using an offshore rod, and using uh, the marbling technique as an under wrap is very cool because it does kind of tie in your colors here. Now, remember, we've talked about this before, but I want to stress this: the marbling cannot be exactly copied, right? I mean, you can always use the same colors, same color scheme. You can try to get it as close as possible, but that is one of the cool parts about this. You know, with thread wraps and such, you can copy it. You can make it just, you can do one after another, whether you're doing a chevron or a cross wrap or, or you know, a fade wrap. You can make it look identical. With the, the marbling, it's never going to be identical, and, and that's part of the fun in this whole deal um, is it'll, it'll never be the same. So it'll be the same colors, but it won't be exact. And, and I think that's something that, you know, kind of drives the whole custom rod building thing. I think it's a neat deal. It's, so. it's a blessing and a curse almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it really it's, is. It's really unique and it's it really awesome. Is. But if you try to make your, uh, your second marbling rod just like your first marbling rod, good luck. Yeah, I'm going to show this one too. Uh, this is really, really neat because this is on an Elite X blank. So this actually might have been a little bit better one to show because it, it jumps out more. It kind of has a, I don't know, kind of a smoke kind of look. But again, that's using, you know, black and gray and whites. And, you know, Hunter's going to walk us through exactly how to do all this. And he's going to use a tool, this little color palette tool, because as you can see here, he's using two colors. He's using black and he's using white, but just as you know, those out there who are very talented artists, uh, they've you can mix colors, you can blend colors, you can tint different colors. Um, that's why you don't need a hundred colors of pigment, right? Right. So uh, kind of basic. I mean, I don't want to say basic color wheels of you know, but it, it is kind of that way. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So you kind of have your what would it be? Primary colors, maybe. Yep. Yeah. Basically your primary colors. Yeah. And then, you know, from these colors, like you said, you can you can mix your yellow and blue and orange together and get just a crazy wild color that, you know, that right. really can't be replicated unless you use those colors. So For sure. um, you know, you're not limited to just these. You can mix these. Um, and of course with the metallic pigments, um, with there being twenty to thirty colors, you really don't have to mix those per se. Right. You have a lot of great <clears throat> options there already. But yeah. so let's dive into it. Cool. So what I'm going to get started with first, like Chris mentioned, I do have some epoxy uh, that I just mixed up. I did five cc's of each part, okay. just to be safe. I have, you know, you could probably get by with three cc's of each, but mm -hmm. I'm just like to mix a little bit extra. That way, I for sure am not going to run out and I've got plenty to yeah, go. Yeah, right? you, <laughs> you don't want to come up short on exactly. a demo, right? So Perfect. a cool little um, product we have here is this mixing palette. So what this allows you to do is, the big section in the middle is typically what I would use for my base color, which you don't have to use. Okay. But since I'm going to be using this slate blank, I think I'm going to go with a, maybe a black base to start with. Okay. You could obviously do, you know, white if you wanted to. You can do any color, but you really want to think about your colors ahead of time. Is what I typically try to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll pick up a, a base color that's going to contrast to the colors that I'm going to put on top of it. Sure. Right. So whether that might be black. Uh, white, you know, it could even be blue depending on what colors you're going to do. It's, it's really up to you. But try to get an idea of what that base color want, you know, needs to be or if you need one to begin with and then think about what contrasting colors would go along with it. Just sure. like, you know, Victor's rod that he made, he's probably got a black base more than likely mm -hmm. and then the contrasting colors on top of white and light grays, dark grays makes it really pop. So. Sure, sure. And I think, you know, we'll walk you through that same uh, thought process, whether it's using the pigments, whether it's using the pearl uh, essence powders, or even using the magic marble on grips. We're going to touch on, you know, making sure you have some sort of a base that allows you to show, uh, you know, varying contrast. Right. So, cool. So, um, that's, that's what I use Ooh, typically so for my, yeah, I try to scoot them a little bit. That's what I would use for my um, base color because more, uh, you know, I'm going to use a lot of that epoxy to start my base, right? And then the smaller circles on the outside is what I'm going to use for my, um, you know, just the, the colors in my um, 
the, my marbling essentially that I'm going to use, right? Sure. Which is typically going to be, you know, two, three, four colors. Um, you can get crazy and go five, six, seven, you know, as many as you want to. Yeah. But um, I usually try to stick with maybe two or three. Okay. So what we're going to start with is I'm going to put a decent amount of this finish into my larger space there. And then on the outside cups, I'm gonna put just a little bit of epoxy in those because we're not gonna be using as much. And I'll go ahead and do four. Okay. So, I'm gonna do a little bit more in the middle here actually. Let's go ahead and use it. See, there that's what that's why I did five. That's it. Hand me a cup over there and I'll go ahead and, and pre-mix a little bit more there just in case we get so I really get wild with it. You need a stick as well? Yeah, sure. There you go. Okay, so now that I got my epoxy in my palette, and guys, make sure you have uh, plenty of paper towels or, or something to clean your fingers with as you go along. Once you get this epoxy going everywhere, it can be yeah. a little bit of a mess. Not, not the thing to do on mom's dining room table. Definitely not. Yeah. So what I'm going to start with is, that's actually, that's a blue, isn't it? Purple. Oh, did I not get black? No, that's all right. We'll go with white. Yeah. So when or you- Or is that just the, the plastic frosted? It's probably just plastic. Is it black? Oh, no, it's not. It's a dark green, I think. Yeah. Okay, so- You don't listen to me. When I go to use this pigment, um, it does not take much at all. So I like to use these plastic uh, sticks. I think they come in 25 packs, I believe. Um, so I take a little bit, and I'll try to get this on camera for you guys. It's gonna be hard since it's against white, but. We gotta zoom there. That's it, just a little bit on the end of that stick. So I'll add just a little bit at a time. Mix that with my epoxy. I can already tell I'm going to use a little bit more. But one thing I don't like to do is put too much pigment in because it can affect the finish um, more so in a way, not, not that it won't dry or anything, but more so when you go to apply it to the blank, it can become a little bit thicker. That's actually uh, pretty good. Mm -hmm. And that's really all you got to do is just mix that in together. Now, once I have that mix, I'm just gonna set that stick down right there. You don't wanna go and use the same stick for a different color. That should be pretty obvious, but just a little tip. And then from there, I think I'm gonna do a blue. So same thing. Yeah, show us here how uh, on, the, now, on the bench cam, what we now, got. Now on this one, since we're dealing with a very, very small amount of epoxy, I'm only going to just barely dip it in there. And that's, that's about all you really need. Let me set that over there so I don't spill it. As you can see, it only takes a few times to mix that around and it's already completely blue. And cool. that's it. I'll leave that one there. Nice. Close my lid. And let's do a, I'm gonna do a purple. The old custom hand cam coming in there, right? That's it. You know, I didn't even take my own advice and actually pick out the colors ahead of time. I was gonna say, what's going but, on with that? You know, I did that on purpose. Did you? You gotta go some orange or some yellow. I think some orange. I think I'm gonna do orange. That's it. Cool. Okay, got that one. Nothing like a little orange and blue and white. I knew you'd like Am that. Am I right, guys? Speaking of that, I just saw the SEC's got a little football calendar out. They're one of the few, right? That's it. <clears throat> The Gators go play Old Miss in September. Oh, wow. Sure. That's uh, it's going to be quite the, quite the deal. Okay. So now we have awesome. our fourth color mixed up. Okay. 
Good to go. Perfect. All right. Now, once you have the initial setup, that knocked out, it's pretty much a breeze from there. Absolutely. Gonna... Now tell us about a little, because uh, I see you've got the spatula set maybe, you've got I do. a probe set over there. So yeah, this is one technique that does require a few different tools, but they are very, um, you know, obviously we sell the, the probe set. It's a set of four. Right. Um, so these, these little uh, probes or picks, I guess you could call them, they work really good when you're trying to, when you know, you put the, the paint pigment on there uh -huh. and you try to brush it out. You know, if you're trying to go for like a flame effect sure. or um, lightning bolts or, you know, something crazy like that, it really sure. helps you just move the paint around a little bit. Cool. Yeah, it kind of helps you, I guess, manipulate it a little bit. Yeah. It's much and then, more of a finer detail yeah. than like a brush would allow. The spatula set, also a four piece set, cool. is works great too. Um, some of these, you know, the spade style um, head is really good for the same effect. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to use the one of the curved, you know, ends, you can really just push that paint around. Sure. Yeah. There's there's several different tools you can use. I personally like using the pick or the probe. Yep. Because um, you can get really detailed, right? Nice. All right. So let's get a brush. So you're gonna base coat it. I'm gonna base coat it. Yep. Cool. And you know, obviously, you can do this in the split grip area. You could do this uh, above your foregrip. You can do it between um, or uh, as an under wrap, essentially, yep. between the, uh, uh, you know, under the feet. There's all different kinds of ways that you can do it. Nice. So while you're doing that, I'm going to hit a, cu uh, a couple questions here. Uh, Jay Robinson out of Facebook is fading a concern. Uh, Jay, I'm going to maybe touch on two options that I think maybe you're referring to there. So fading from the sun, no. Um, in any of this, uh, when using the Threadmaster or the Pro Coat or, or any thread finish like that, it's got UV inhibitors in it. Um, it really should stay fairly sharp and crisp. Uh, granted, you know, yes, we all know that um, you know epoxy finishes can can dull or yellow over time. Uh, I, I would still venture to say that the Pro Coat uh, lasts. When I say lasts, I mean it, it stays the clearest, the longest. So. For some decorative stuff, I, I do like the Pro Coat for that. Uh, the Threadmaster is excellent as well. Um, now, maybe the other type of fading you mean, I don't know if you mean maybe two colors fading into one another. You do have to be careful with that. And I'm going to show you a little bit later how not to booger that up. So if you've noticed, we, we mix the epoxy. We've put it in the little sections. And we're not in a hurry to do this, uh, meaning that having finish that is already, you know, setting up or, or getting to the point where it's, it's kind of in a constant state, not like you've heard me say hot finish before, and that is right after it's mixed, uh, you know, it is uh, when it is, you know, the most runny, I guess you would say. Uh, that's not what we're using here. We usually mix it up, put it in these dishes, put the color in it, and give it about the same amount of time you would put over a decal. So we want it to be workable, but we don't want it to be so runny that it just runs all together and, you know, I guess fades together. Now, the other thing you have to be very careful of when you're doing this is if you apply heat to this at all, it will really make it kind of go crazy. Yeah. So if you get your finish where you want it and you go to add heat to it, you will move the pattern. And that can be good or bad. Uh, the, the good part about this is, is if you do get into a position where you booger it up or you mess it up, you can just come in and wipe it off and clean it off and, and start over. Um, I'll show, you know, I'll show you what happens when that happens. And you do get into a situation where all the colors can kind of just run together. And, you know, we've all used heat or a alcohol burner or something to, right. to help drip additional finish off. Well, when you do that and there's pigment colors in it, you get all kind of weird effects. Maybe that's an effect you want. Maybe it's not. But we'll show that later. So that's just something going into this you have to keep in mind. Um, and you can always put this 
coloring coat down. And if it's not perfectly level um, or it, you know, it kind of is more or less on one side, you can always come back in with additional coats of epoxy that will level it out. So don't, don't think just because it's, you know, maybe has one or two little waves in it uh, that you can't fix that with additional clear coats of finish. So that's just kind of option there. Cool. All right, so what I have so far, now you can obviously see that there is um, a little bit of the blank showing through. Mm -hmm. um, don't worry about that too much because typically when I go in and add the paint, I'm going to pretty much cover this entire, there's going to be a little bit of white showing through, right? but you're not going to really see much of the graphite or the, the blank color underneath at all. No. So, um, so let's get started. What I like to do first is I'm going to go in with the, the first blue and I'm going to take, um, I still have my plastic um, <coughs> mixing stick. So I'm going to just dab it in there a little bit. I'll wait for you to get the no, camera. No, no, no. Okay. Go okay. ahead. Yeah. And I'm just going to, no, well, that didn't work out too well. I'm going to get a decent little amount. And preferably, I like where it will just do that. So I'm just adding little drops. Now, this is completely up to how you want to marble your rod blank. You can come in with really big dots, smaller dots. You can go in with streaks. It is really completely up to you. And one thing I try to do, if you guys can see on camera, is almost touch the epoxy in the paint and not touch it with the stick like I just did there. Takes a little bit. Oh, see, I missed there. And come in and just apply those dots. And some can be bigger than others. So I think we're good there. I'm going to let that spin for just a minute. Because one thing I like to do is not rush it too much. Because um, right. you can see the, the first coat that I put down was maybe a little bit too much epoxy, so you can kind of see the blue starting to run a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I like to just let that sit for a few seconds, maybe a minute. Just kind of let the epoxy, because it is self-leveling, so it's just going to kind of right. just move out, right, and make those dots a little bit bigger. For sure. And then if you want to, you can come in right now and just kind of... Now, and two, that was a good point. You know, when you put your base coat down, if you feel that it is not level or that you want it to be as level as possible, with one coat and one color, that's the time to do your heat. So yep. if, if you're going to use heat to level this finish out at all, that's the time to do it. Do it when you put the first coat on, you haven't done any, you know, adding of this secondary color or drops or waves or anything else into it. If you're ever going to do it, do it then. That's a really cool thing about marbling is, you know, you can come in, you can do the dot technique and then move the paint around. Um, you can also, a lot of people double up on the dots. So like the first blue I put down, I will come back over top with the, um, the second, the the darker blue, almost purple, right on top of the first dot. And so it creates a cool effect then when you go back in and use your, your pick to spread that paint out because you sure. have the multicolor, the two-tone look. And of course, you can do multiple colors on top of each other as well. Yep. We call Hunter the Bob Ross of rod building around here. <laughs> so he's got pretty, pretty dots. Pretty dots. Pretty dots. You need to work on that hair, though. I know. It's not quite. I know. I need to. It's not quite where it needs to be. I need a, a perm. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't know. Okay. So I'm gonna just fast forward a little bit here. That's it. Let's let's get it going. Let's gator out. Get it going. So I'm just really gonna come in with the orange and make it pop. It's a little boring right now. I'll admit. We can change that. Rod building is not boring. Don't say anything like that. I can feel the eye rolls in the group. Oh, yeah, definitely. 
Well, let's be honest. I think they're all sticking around because they might charge your credit card for one of those limited edition RBS Pro that's, that's black for, track. That's definitely, yeah, that's, that's worth listening to us for an hour and a half. <laughs> Absolutely. A chance to win. Well, and the best part of that is if they're part of the group, they're in. They don't have to do anything special. Yeah. They're in. Okay. Now's when we can really make it look cool. Jay, can you scroll down a little on that uh, teleprompter just to see if I'm missing any questions that maybe I can hit while... Uh, I'll hit Andrew's here. Why do I get a wavy feel after the epoxy dries? Andrew, typically that is uh, because there is too much epoxy and it's not able to completely level itself out. If you, if you do get a wavy feel to it, uh, it's because you are kind of getting a bunch of little footballs in there. So if you ever see on a guide wrap where the finish is really, really heavy on the guide wraps and it creates like little footballs, um, you're getting a bunch of little footballs throughout this finish if you were to do it here over a long section. So what it does is it creates a wave effect. So just try to use less finish, um, you know, or maybe even drop back and do two thin coats. You know, that's, that's a pretty good option. I, I do multiple coats sometimes over decals uh, because the vinyl on the decal sometimes, you know, is a little trickier to get perfectly smooth the first time and, um, you know, you won't get so wavy with it. So, David, right. uh, as someone who has no experience with marbling, how hard is it to master? I got to tell you, David, uh, when we first got into this whole marbling game, we were far from experts and we still are far from experts at this but the best part about it is nobody's really going to know if you're an expert or not because it's so you know if you follow the simple steps when it's mixing the finish adding the different colors and then as you see here go kind of slow hunter put some colors in that he wants move it around a little and you're done. It, it doesn't have any kind of crazy, you know, scientific method behind this. Um, you can never, you know, duplicate one that you've done before. So, you know, for somebody to be like, oh, well, that marbling looks terrible or that one looks better than the other one or whatever, it, it starts to get a little personal opinion. Uh, whereas sometimes when you do thread work, you know, if your cross wraps are not aligned or your thread is not packed tightly or you know, there's little odds and ends that you can go through and, and kind of critique and improve on when you do thread wraps because it is a little more, uh, you know, of an exact deal. Whereas here, you know, it, Hunter could technically just be done with that. And it, to me, it looks pretty cool. You know, white, orange, blue. Uh, he could come back in here and block these ends off and wrap over them with any one of these colors as trim bands. Uh, you know, he could come in and add more to it, wipe some off. It doesn't matter. So right there, you know, you don't have to be an expert to, to put this together. You just need to know those simple steps of, you know, you use this finish, don't use too much pigment, and then work through it, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, certainly not the best one ever. The, the only thing I probably could improve on is, is to put more, more paint um, on the entire, you know, base. Mm -hmm and then really go in and start working on it. Sure. Um, for, for time's sake, you know, we try to be a little efficient here and, and get through the demo, so. Um, but yeah, certainly I could probably go in. But, you know, honestly, if, if, if you're the effect you're going for is to try to make that base color really come through, yeah. this, this is it right here, It'd be perfect. Absolutely. So that's the, um, the Express version, the tutorial on how to, how to marble. Um, and like we said, you can really get creative with this. Um, you can spend as little as, what, 15, 20 minutes on it, or, yeah. you know, as, as long as your epoxy doesn't cure, um, you could work on this for, you know, 45 minutes to an hour if you really wanted to. For sure. And, and you know, you could come in and, and mix another batch and, and add some other colors at a different time and, and things like that. So, uh, it, you know, uh, this is a great question from Chris here. If you make a mess of it and you want to remove it, yeah, absolutely. You, you can absolutely remove it. You know, uh, if you look at it, you'll know pretty quick that if Hunter didn't like this, 
in the state that it's in. It's still wet. It hasn't dried at all. And it's not going to change. It's, it's not like he's going to look at this and go, wow, this looks great, and walk away and come back in two hours and go, what happened? Right. It's awful. This is what it's going to be. It's just got to cure out. So if you don't like it the way that it looks right now, just take your paper towels and, you know, some alcohol, denatured alcohol, your 71% or 91 whatever you use, wipe it off yeah. and start again. Maybe you don't want to use white as a base coat, or maybe you want to change up. I didn't use enough orange. I didn't use enough blue. You know, change it up. So, yeah, you can wipe it off. It's, it's not quite if, you know, you put five hours into a decorative thread wrap and then you pull one out or something breaks and you got to start over. This is a little easier than that, you know. For sure. So. Uh, Tiffany, how long will it take the marble to, to sit? Um, definitely would not want to mess up. Um, take to sit? As think, in set up? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think it, it's just finish. Yeah, so it's exactly. Be the same. It, you know, if you're using, um, you know, we use Threadmaster Lite here, um, which typically, you know, we just let it sit overnight. It usually takes, what, probably full 24 hours to cure. Mm -hmm. um, so. But yeah, I mean, just, you know, think of it as, as a standard epoxy, whatever that time is that you would typically take for that rod to set up, that's going to be the same amount of time. The, the pigment doesn't really mess with the drying time or the working time too much. No. That all remains the same. So. Yeah. Cool. What you got next? Oh, did you want to show them uh, the little color preserver trick while you got some finish here? You yeah. want me to do it on the next one? Let's do it. Uh, let's do it now. It'll, we can segue to the next one. Okay. Cool. Perfect. Let me get my mess cleared out of here. Yeah. As I mentioned, <laughs> make sure you have plenty of paper towels or maybe get some uh, newspaper and, and put on your bench because sure. these pigments can get messy. And the, I know we didn't show it, but the, um, the metallic pigment essentially works the same way. It is a powder as opposed to a, um, a liquid pigment, um, but essentially it's the same way. Add it to your epoxy. And, and you're good to go. Yeah, and but I'll show that. We're going to show that. Yeah. All right, let me get some towels. All right, you got me another Bob Ross tray down there? Yeah. One right here. I shouldn't say that. We're going to have to trademark that. <laughs> Hunter Ross or something. Um, now, do you think, because there's a question there from Kevin, do you think it really matters on high build or not high build? Well, I was going to say, to, to have the best effect with marbling, I feel like it's great to have um, at least another thin coat on top of your marbling because it does give it that little bit of, you know, depth. Um, I, I really, I don't think it matters, at least in my opinion it doesn't. Yeah. Um, use whatever finish you're comfortable with, I would probably say that. And then, um, like I said, I would, I would definitely come back in and add at least one more thin coat, maybe even two if... If your uh, your base, if your the base epoxy coat wasn't too thick, mm -hmm. what do you think? I agree with you. I don't think it matters. Yeah. I mean, I just built some saltwater rods that I did some thread work over, and I used the the light build and just did you know a couple coats over my thread work with the light build. You know, I don't I don't have any hard feelings on the fact that you know oh you have to use. Uh, High build or the pro coat medium build or so anything like that. So I'm just gonna put some more white in here. I just figured I would do that so that they could see the transition here. So all right, so what I'm going to do is do a very similar start out from the man hunter here. Just gonna put some white down. I like that you grab the old uh, wire clamp dryer. I like that clutch or uh, chuck the best. Oh, absolutely. This gives you the ability to, you know, whether you're working with a saltwater rod, fly, fly rod, anything in between. Well, you know, we're, with, we're got the scrap blanks here. It's kind of we don't have like a fighting butt on it, right? Mm -hmm. So 
See, you're purposely messing me up here. I usually have it turning towards <laughs> me. I can but, switch it. I know. Right? <laughs> uh, let's we got see. a question. Yeah, I got a question crazy? for you. Uh, could you use tape to get clean lines on the ends of your base coat? Yeah. The good thing about it, though, is most of the base coat is going to be covered. That's correct. Or I wouldn't say. Did I say most? No, I didn't mean uh, most. Not of most it. of it, but but the edges. The edges. Yes. You're gonna do like you would on a uh, thread wrap, like a butt wrap, where you close it off. So I'm gonna just gonna kind of show them here, if because I am gonna show the what not to do. So I think we have an alcohol burner back here, don't we? There's one right there. All right, cool. So as I mentioned before. If it's a little, you know, not level, I'm going to do this before. You guys are pranking me back here. That's what happens when I haven't used it in a while. <laughs> okay. There you go. It's live, everybody. It's live. So if you do add a little heat, add it now, right? So do that because I'll show you what not to do here in a few minutes. See how it gets really runny? You can see it with the white on it. See how I can move it around and it really, it really shows there. So that's, you know, something that you want to be sure you do this before you put the colors in it. So now we are going to move. See, I'm just going to put it in here. I'm going to do. What do you think would show up the best? Orange, probably. Yeah. Yeah, probably orange. All right. Orange it is. So we don't have to do too much, as we mentioned before. I'm going to do orange. I'm going to put it in this guy. I wanted to do it in the cup so that you guys could see it a little bit better rather than being in the tray. All right, so orange is mixed up. It's pretty well pigmented. That's a word. I'll have to check on Guffy if that's a word or not. And, uh, now, tell us a little bit about this color preserver deal. So, this was a trick that we learned from uh, Brooke here at Mudhole. It's very specific to flex coat color preserver. You cannot use Pro Seal, Chroma Seal, um, any other color preserver except for flex coat. It's got to be this one. It's got to be that one. So, what you're going to achieve is what you're going to show us is a. It's a. <laughs> how do we say this? A stringy, is that? Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like if you take bubble gum and pull the bubble gum and it leaves a really yeah. defined line. It uh, essentially just takes your epoxy, it thickens it up by a lot, and you get a consistency that allows you to almost pull out a strand of yeah. epoxy. So the interesting part about this, though, is there's no exact science <laughs> to how much you put in this. So I wish I could tell you guys to put, like, one ml per seven mls and there's not <laughs> there is just flat out not so i'm going to put a little bit in here and then we're going to do a little bit at a time so you'll notice though when it starts to get right hopefully i didn't already overdo it but i don't think so yeah a little goes a long way you definitely want to you don't want to overdo it because then you just get yes. a glob of epoxy. Yeah. You can kind of, it's already like kind of started to get a little weird. <laughs> it's a very technical term. It is, yeah. Very technical, starting to get weird. Now, the one thing it will do as well because the color preserver is white, as you saw when I poured it out of the bottle, 
it will make the orange look a little hazy, I guess would be the term, but it's, it's not going to stay that way. So as most of you guys know, these color preservers, they do dry clear and that's what will happen. So it will not alter the orange um, to where it's going to be like, oh, well, that just really killed that orange. It's not going to do that. So uh, I'll make sure I shut. I think I shut this thing. I think you did. So again, we're doing this a little at a time. All right. And every time you put a little more in, it kind of reacts a little weird. Would you give me a paper towel and slide kind of that one under there? Because this is one of those parts where it does get messy. And you can see. There we go. Can you get on me here, Nick? It's kind of, it's almost like it's cured or curing. Hopefully that works a little bit. See, it's kind of just, it's kind of weird, right? Again, super technical term, weird. All right, so we're almost there. And I'm going to, all right, so we're spinning here. And you can kind of see now it, it wants to get real stringy like this. And now I can put just very, very defined lines in it, right? That's my signature right there. If you guys can't <laughs> see that, it's cool. You're getting pretty good at that. Yeah, I will say. You know, I should be a doctor. Again, apologize to any physicians <laughs> that we may have watching. You guys' handwriting Dad is watching. Yeah, y'all's handwriting is perfect, trust me. All right, so yeah, we're just going to kind of do some really cool stuff. I don't want to mess up my signature there. But you can kind of work your way around it. You can see it's just really sharp lines, right? And the, you know, if you like, pull it and string it out a little bit more. It'll get thinner. You can drag it across. So again, you know, it's just one of those deals you'll never be able to replicate uh, and do it exact every time. But it is kind of a cool look because it is something a little different. And uh, it might take a little extra practice to yeah. To get those lines right. Yeah. And you, you saw I kind of added a little, weighted, added a little more. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to rush this and then it, it will turn into a mess right quick if it's, not, if it's not right. You really want it to be these very kind of tacky type finish where, you know, I'm pulling strings out like this and can go all the way across. You can see there how really awkward and stringy it kind of is. But so, yeah, that's kind of a couple. And I can always come back in here and, you know, do some kind of different designs or, or change it up a little or or whatever. So um, that's that's kind of how you do that. Now, if you have it just like you want it, I'm going to show you how to completely mess this up. So I think we all can appreciate that a little bit because we've been there. So again, this will set just as you see it. It'll cure out. And uh, I'm even going to mess Hunter's up too. Oh, so I was starting to like mine. No, you won't. <laughs> Get out of here. Right. Get out of here. You like, you'll like this one being a volunteer fan more than... <laughs> no, no, no. I know, no, I know. No, no. I know. Do they not? The dreaded orange. Oof. That's it. Woof. Yeah, I'm not sure if they even have a football team anymore. You said it. <laughs> I didn't say it. Good old Rocky Top. 
Yeah, we definitely just lost some viewers on that one. <laughs> Kind of see it start to. It looks like a, like an Instagram filter now. <laughs> it's starting to get real weird. But you know, again, you can do it, it can be a cool look if if that's what you're going for. Sure. Um, yeah. And if you do want to spread it out like that, you can. Just don't get too carried away. Sure. Or. Or get carried away. Or look you at it can go there. get carried away, Whoa. and yeah. I would call that the 3 a.m. right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little. You got to put your foot on the floor to keep it from spinning. Whew! Perfect. I think they might look better. What do you think? <laughs> hey, <laughs> why, why not? Whatever you say, boss. But yeah, you can uh, if you if you. Well, you know the the issue is there's some sections here. See, this is starting to get kind of muddled. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like a, I don't even know what that color is. I'm sure Crayola could come up with a name for that one. But you can see here, there's no, now it's just like mush. You know, it's like a little kid eating ice cream when he takes all like six flavors and mixes it together. So yeah, just kind of, just be careful. If you go to add, if you've got a really cool design and then you go and add heat and it's like, well. Uh-oh. There it goes. Yep. That's why you don't do it on mom's <laughs> dining room table, everybody. And that's your do's and don'ts for the evening. Yeah, marbling 101 and 101.5. <laughs> so with the, with the color preserver trick, again, the flex coat, color preserver, and thread sealer, you got to use this one. There's, a, I think, I forget what Brooke said is in it. It's some kind of like polymer thing or something that the other ones don't have in it that makes that thing. Acrylic polymer, maybe? Oh, yeah. Maybe. Contains <clears throat> acrylic polymer. That's what makes the finish kind of go wacky. Yeah. But it still cures. It doesn't, it, it's not going to affect the curing or your epoxy in general, or it will still cure out and you'll still be fine. Um, Let's see the question. Uh, can you use the color preserver trick with metallic pigments? You absolutely can. The reason you can is because this is affecting the finish. Right. It has nothing to do, it's, it's not reacting with the pigment. It's reacting with the Pro Coat, the Threadmaster. It's reacting with the finish. So it doesn't matter um, if you put the metallic in it or the, the regular pigment in it. It doesn't matter. It will do the same. And I have a little example here yeah. that I'll show in a minute. So, yes, the answer is, well, I don't know if it was a yes or no, but it will... You can use it in anything because it reacts with the finish. Yep. So, yep. Cool. That is that. All right. All right. I think you need to uh, give something away. Third place giveaway? Mm hmm. Hmm. That's going to be our marbling starter kit. Cool. And I don't remember everything that's in that, but the good news is, is it's really all you truly need to get started. Exactly. Uh, third place giveaway the starter marbling kit goes to Mr. Jim Eccles Jr. from Facebook. Nice, coming out of Jim Facebook. Jim Eccles Jr. Congratulations, Jim. Congratulations. That's a good one. Good one to get started. Yes. So. So next you have the same trick, but mm -hmm. we're going to go to grips now, right? Yes. Yes. Um, let's do something with this sure. so we make sure we get it everywhere. You still need the dryer? Yeah. Yeah, I, I do still need the dryer. Because I just want to show what we're going to do with that CFX. Let's get this out of the way. Pitch that. Get one of these guys. Tell you what, I'm going to. Is there other pigments? Yeah. You can pull those back out. Um, where do you want to move this guy? Uh, we got another dryer. You just want to can it. All right, so what I've got is I'm going to mix up a little bit more finish here while Hunter picks that up, and... It's going to go somewhere safe. We are going to do... I just want to talk about putting marble over grips. And actually, I'll just use that. That'll be fine. I'm going to use this one. All right. 
CFX. Cool. Got the expensive stuff since it's on Hunter's bill. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk to you all about putting finish over this because we get this question a lot um, on how much finish or do you put finish or what can you do here. Um, and the reason I'm using the CFX is one, because I think it's cool. Uh, two, it has somewhat of a texture to it. So when you do put finish over it, you can go really, really thick and get rid of the texture. <clears throat> and then you'll just have a plain, I shouldn't say plain. Then you'll have a coated grip. So it really won't matter if you have CFX or cork or something like that. But I just want to show you how to put finish over this because it is also going to relate to your cork as well. Now I'm going to use uh, Threadmaster on this. The reason I'm going to do Threadmaster over this is because I'm going to do designs on it. If you were going to use like a spray urethane to just coat it, you could. But um, I've never really monkeyed around with decorating this with urethane already on it and then putting it over. Right. You probably would be okay. I but think so. I'm going to show, let me see where this is at. All right. All right. So. Got any other questions I can um, maybe answer? Uh, Patrick, if you put marbling over guide wraps, should you do it um, on the first or the second coat? Um, I would probably do it on the first. Um, so not only um, can you use these pigments to marble, you can also just use them to tint your guide wraps if you really want to. So you could take this orange and just simply mix it with your epoxy and you know, it might take one or two coats depending, um, but you can you know, totally just change your guide wrap to orange if you really wanted to. Um, that's one way to do it. Um, to answer your question though, I would, I would do it on the first and then I would come back in um, just as we talked about before with a thin second coat on top of just um, epoxy itself with no marbling in it. You got any uh, thoughts on that? No, I think you are dead on, my man. Dustin, any advice for marbling over a guide wrap, a uh, size thread, um, or using epoxy before marble? Um, that kind of hits on the same question as Patrick there. Um, you know, you can use any size thread that you want to, but the size thread doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's the same kind of thing, basically. You know, it's, it's one of those things you can either use the, the pigment to tint the epoxy. Um, you can also use it to marble as well. Um, really, it's just up to you, depending on what kind of effect you want to go with. Yes, that is true. So you are putting a layer of epoxy. Yeah, and I didn't do the whole thing, but yeah. I didn't want to be here all night. So I'm going to get more of your speed out to a little black and gold. This is the yellow gold. So this is your powder pigments kind of have a pearl essence kind of vibe to them. It will go everywhere, so be very careful when you're dealing with this thing. So I'm going to scoop a little bit up here. I'm going to see if I have, probably have just enough in this one. I'm going to do one more real quick. Okay. Uh, Dustin, what steps to marble under a double foot guide do you need to under wrap first? No, Dustin, you do not have to uh, do an under wrap. Um, you can essentially just do, um, you know, you need to figure out your spacing for, the, for your guide feet um, and whether you want that marbling to go past, um, you know, or, or on both sides of that guide foot. Or, as we showed uh, the rods earlier, 
just between the guide foot. So essentially, you know, um, you can see the marbling underneath the guide, the guide feet, you know, between mm -hmm. the guide feet, yep. but they don't extend past the guide feet. So your thread kind of covers up the rest of the marbling there. Yeah. But um, it's the same process. Just lay down that, that first um, coat of marbling. And then I would probably come back in. Well, I guess you really don't need a second coat for an under wrap, really, would you? No, nah, I'd really. probably just do the one. For an under wrap, if you're trying to do an under wrap uh, marbling style, then I would probably just do one coat of marbling and, uh, and then call it a day. Then you can come back in, put your guide over top, um, then wrap on each side. So this, I wanted to show you guys. I put a coat down, very, very thin, of finish. And I'm actually putting it a little heavier than I might if uh, I wasn't showing this on camera. But I wanted to show you guys what a this translucent pearl looks like because it's really, really neat in the fact that you can put it over this carbon fiber and it will give a, for example, this is gold, so it will give a pearlescent gold kind of a shine and it really, really pops in the sunlight. Now, two, what I'm doing is, is I put a little, it's a little thick here on the ends, um, and I'm actually just manipulating it a little bit down this grip. And what I'm doing is I'm just fading it in. So it kind of looks like you might have dipped it in gold and then it transitions and fades out, right? So your ends are going to be a little heavier than, than working towards the center. So you can also take it and, and add some heat to this, but it really gives the metallic, uh, kind of the pearlescent gold, really does add kind of a neat pop to it. Now, when you're also working with this carbon fiber stuff, because it has high and low spots, you can actually coat this and, excuse me, I thought I was going to sneeze there. You can actually coat this and still maintain the texture, right? So as you come down here, you can do a very, very thin coat to where it's just barely, you know, barely coated. It will give a little bit of sheen, it'll be, give a little bit of color, but you're not going to have it turn into the, just this slick grip, right? Um, and then, of course, I'm going to what we'll do is we will add this gold in here. And of course I'm just mixing the gold in with the other the other part that I had. I'm gonna use a little bit more. Because remember, when we're doing the, when we're using the carbon fiber, it is already a base coat because it's a solid black carbon fiber piece. So that I think is where the the pearlescent can really, really shine because you know it's extremely dark. Let's see if I can't do this. I'm gonna press my luck with doing a couple of these on the show but I think it's worth it. There was a question. Um, as the marbling cures and levels out, you lose your sharp lines. Is there a way to keep the sharp lines? Um, the answer to that, I would recommend uh, maybe not using as much epoxy, because um, sometimes when that epoxy does sit for a little bit of time and starts to actually level out is when you will lose those sharp lines. So maybe um, for one, 
back off on the amount of epoxy you use, especially on your base coat or your base layer if you're using one. Um, and then two, like Chris showed with the, uh, the heat, if you're using a, an alcohol um, a torch or lamp or a heat gun, um, try to back off on that heat a little bit because that will cause your epoxy to, to thin yep. and sort of run, so. Absolutely. So I saw you added the color preserver again. Going back in with the lines. And I wanted to show here because this is what I was mentioning about when you put the color preserver in and it almost looks like you're going to lose the translucent kind of effect with the gold. But I'll show you what it looks like when it cures out and you don't lose it. All right, so that is kind of a quick tutorial on that. And this is actually the black carbon fiber with the pearlescent grip. And you can see I purposely left it a very, very thin coat because you can still see the texture in that. See how it rotates and the light catches that texture you can actually, you can actually still hear that is, that is the texture. So you can kind of do a cool design. Um, that is, like I said, that's kind of the silver pearl or the white pearl. It really pops, it picks it back up uh, when it cures out and then you can come back in and add, you know, another coat over that if you want. You can do all kinds of different things. So that's kind of, you know, working with carbon fiber, working with marbling. You can do this over cork. Uh, you can do this over that carbon tubing, like a Tennessee handle. Yeah. Just be very, very careful doing it over EVA. People ask this a lot, but the EVA, because it is soft, I don't think it does nearly as good of a job. Yeah, um, it doesn't really want to hold the epoxy. Yeah, so uh, will the epoxy crack on the grip? No, no, this, it doesn't, it doesn't crack at all. It's very, this carbon fiber stuff is incredibly strong. The, the epoxy finish will not crack. Because um, remember, rod coat is hard, but it, it, it still maintains a little bit of flex in it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you'd really have to get after this thing to, I mean, like, I like doing that. Yeah. I really, like, you really have to get after it. There is absolutely no, you know, there is nothing wrong here with this. So, yeah, you're good. It's a neat, it's a neat grip, neat option. What else? Uh, Cody's got a good question. How many cc's do y'all recommend for each color you are using for marbling? So, Cody, what I did to begin with was do five cc's of each part for my epoxy, mm -hmm. for my thread finish. Um, and then I just kind of distributed that out um, depending on you know how many colors I'm gonna use. Obviously, uh, when we're using the palette, the, the larger circle, I put uh, the majority of the epoxy because that was my base color. And then for the smaller circles, um, basically the accent colors for your marbling, you don't really need much epoxy, um, but I, you know, the five cc's of each side worked uh, pretty well, so yeah, that's what I would go with. Cool. All right. What do you think? I think we should do another giveaway. You ready to give something else away? <laughs> I like it. Cool. Well, get your credit card back out. I know that that was, you know, a little quicker, but we had gotten some CFX stuff in. <clears throat> I know sometimes we, they don't get enough love, and we had some questions that came in. I think yeah. the CFX is just, it's a cool deal. It's cool. Yeah. So. There it is. Cool. All right, what are we giving away now? Well, let's see. Second. Well, I guess this is technically the runner-up giveaway. Oh. Uh, what do we got there, guys? Runner-up giveaway. All right, this is the professional marbling kit, and this one goes to Aaron Huffling from cool. YouTube. 
Love to see the YouTube guys uh, join in. I agree. You know what I think I'm going to do too is this Flexcope color preserver and thread sealer, it comes in a little bottle. I think we do two sizes. I think we do two sizes. That's a four. This is we a do four. a one. We, we do a, a one, right? Okay. Um, let's put a note somewhere. I think in the marbling kit, or each marbling kit, third place, runner-up, and even in the uh, grand prize, because the grand prize does have some marbling. Let's add in, I should have thought of that. Let's add in a flex coat color preserver uh, bottle. I'll just do the whatever the one ounce is because you can see how little I use this. You probably will never use all of that in this, you know, yeah. in this situation. You'll probably never use all of it. So um, there you go. Put it on Hunter's tab. Why not? And we're going to add some color preserver up. So, all right. I think we are done with this one, right? Cool. I like that. That's got that UCF vibe to it. Yeah, it turned out good. Nice. That's the uh, that's the national champion of of uh, CFX grips. Yeah. Nice. Cool. No comment. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Now we've got magic marbling. Where are we are we on time? Okay. Cool. Quarter, quarter till eight. That's not too bad. We got two more hours. <laughs> Let me move this pigments. All right. All right, man. So you're, you're the magic marble man. Am I? I don't know. I feel like is Kurt Kurt Baker. I know he's he's one of the one of yeah. the instructors in the classes. Speaking of that, if y'all aren't taking a virtual rod building class with Todd and Kurt and Cindy, Jesus, Jesus, Cindy, yeah. you guys are really you're really missing out because we've got them going on. I actually think there's one now. I think so. So I know they kind of drew the short straw on that one, not getting to see Hunter's pretty face tonight. But um, they're learning a lot. Yeah, they're learning a lot. So I don't, I don't know who's running that tonight. Um, but run over to the Mudhole page, just mudhole.com. There is a tab that says classes. So under that, it will give you all about the classes. You can then also click on the virtual rod building option. That will give you the dates, the times. Uh, and, and how to get signed up for that. It's, uh, for what you get, it is a deal of all deals. Absolutely. Um, we send you, not only do you get all the equipment, but you get all the top knowledge from all the good guys and girls, you know, rod builders. Yeah. So, between the virtual rod building classes, uh, you know, if you have bought one of the turnkey rod kits or you get the, uh, you know, FSP2 that's got the rod building book in it. We spent a lot of time on that. I mean, between that and of course the 10,000 member strong Mud Hole Lives Rod Builders Workshop Group, which I think we all know is clearly the best rod building forum group on Facebook. Wow. All of that. I think it's top notch. I'd say, yeah, I'd have to agree. It's got the best members, it's got the best moderators. We, uh, we appreciate everybody. So, yeah. That's my spiel on the virtual rod building classes. It's pretty cool. It's done right here. So, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Let's talk Magic Marble. Take it away. Marble. Take it away. Cool. So, Magic Marble is actually very, very easy. You only need a few things. Obviously, your pigments. Um, so, we have a couple basic colors here. I've got yellow, orange, green. And is this dark blue? All right. I'm going to be a little crazy on the colors. Make sure they pop on camera, right? Oh, I, you know, I so like to give you all the options. We, we already have a few examples over here of how crazy you can get with colors, right? This one yeah. turned out pretty cool. Kind of uh -huh. cool, right? You want to see one that didn't? Yeah, let's yeah. show that one. Let's show them the one that looks awful. <laughs> all right. Uh, this one is what happens when you do not let your colors settle on the surface of the water. So, I'm sorry, Nick. I'm playing a little chase you with that. But, uh... Yeah, this one is a little, it's real splotchy. There was too much paint. Um, this is what happens when, as you add the colors to the water, they hit the surface and then they pretty much run. They spread out and create a very thin film. Well, something to look at when you're doing this is if you're adding color and it starts to splotch up on the surface of the water, and you get little balls of color, this is what's gonna happen. And then what ends up happening is the paint doesn't dry because it's too heavy and 
then I also, I don't know what else you want to call this, but it is, it is a pure mess of color. So just be careful. And that's, that's what can happen if, you know, again, um, we'll give you a few kind of tips and tricks and things to go by. And then from there, let your imagination take over. But yeah, you can, you can kind of sort of booger this up a little bit if you're not careful. Yeah. So we have our, our pigment, magic marble pigments, mm -hmm. our paints. Yep. We have, um, I believe you got this at what? That is a Walmart buy. Walmart. That is a candy jar, apparently. Okay. So either a, um, like a water pitcher works great. Mm -hmm. A uh, candy jar from Walmart works great. Yep. Anything that's a, sort of a cylinder shape, um, it needs to be somewhat tall. And this, of course, depends on the, the, the length of the component right. that you want to dip. Because you obviously need something that is that has enough depth that your component can go all the way in and be submerged. It can't be, you know, this tall because our component would not be able to go in all the way mm -hmm. and get the paint, right? Yep. So now, before we go any farther, and in addition to what you just said there, mm -hmm. we get this question all the time. Well, what happens if I use a PVC pipe? The issue, because people think, okay, I'm gonna do an entire rod blank, which technically you could. Right. But the problem is, Yes, this is too shallow, obviously, to put a rod blank in here, unless you're, you know, like David Blaine or something. If you're thinking, well, I'm just going to get a PVC pipe and it'll be an 8-footer or a 10-footer, the issue is the surface area of the water would have to be, I mean, you'd have to have like a culvert style. It would have to be 20 inches across because, remember, as you put this component in, the, the paint is surrounding this and you're, you're covering it, right? So what happens is, is if you just have a two inch pipe, even though it's 10 feet long, you're only gonna get so far because the opening in the pipe, you can only hold paint on the surface. Mm -hmm. So as you put it in there, you're gonna run out of paint and then the whole rest of the rod blank is now just gonna be wet and it's not gonna be color, covered in anything. So that's, that's an issue with this too. So you have to not only think, like you said, you gotta think about depth, but you also have to think about water surface area to be sure you have enough paint on that surface that's going to completely cover this deal here. Great Unless you only wanna cover half or a quarter of it, right. for whatever reason, mm -hmm. but that's, that's another part of this whole equation. Cool. So, and another helpful thing to have is some type of mandrel, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. whether it be a actual mandrel, whether it be a piece of scrap rod blank to where you can actually dip in your grip or your grill seat and not have to get your hands, um, you know, dirty or anything like that. Yeah. So, and we do need to have some paper towels. I'll get that for you. Yep. This actually does help for a two man team to, to tackle this actually. Absolutely. And who could pick a better two man team? Come on. So I'm going to come in with my dark blue. Um, it does help if you have cold water. I'm mm -hmm. almost positive. Okay. I don't know why, I like but the I, I've, I've heard that before. Okay. So when you come in, I'm going to do a couple drops right on top. Okay. Might be a little bit too much, but. Uh, sure. And one thing too is I did this a few minutes ago before we started the demo. <clears throat> Make sure that you guys shake these jars for at least probably 20, 30 seconds a piece. Um, some of the paint does like to settle at the bottom sometimes, so make sure you really give them a good shake. Um, that way it's dispersed throughout the entire jar. Cool. All right, let's come in with some yellow. Or maybe not. Let's not do yellow. Okay. Let's do orange. That's a good sign. Yeah, okay, so we got some orange. That's probably good. And let's do a little bit of green. Cool, that's eh, a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do first is actually incorporate these colors a little bit. I'm just gonna mix them around just a little bit. Just like that. Then we could probably use a little bit more blue, but I'm gonna let it go like that. Okay. So, 
do we want to show one that's prime first, or do we want to show one that's not primed? Oh, it doesn't matter. Let's you do got the that primed. one. Right. Yeah, hang on. Let me. Uh, I'm going to try to get. I'm going to try to get a. Uh, we're getting get the, we're get getting real shot. here. We're getting real here. All right, standby for. So we'll do this grip real quick, and then we'll go uh, we'll go over the explanation of primed and not primed. All right, you ready? That looks pretty good. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, I'm not going yet. All right, we good there? Yeah, sure. Why not? So I got a little bit of white splotches, not quite enough paint, but that's okay. So one thing I am going to do is I'm going to go in and remove this paint that is on the top that's remaining. And I'll pull my grip out. Yeah, just like that. And yeah, I knew I didn't add quite enough blue. That's my bad. But hey. you get the idea. I think we got it right. Now, don't set it down right. on something. Exactly. Because this does need to dry out completely. Uh, because otherwise, you will put a mark in it. Um, and you don't have to, you don't have to tap it with anything or, or tamp it down, nothing. Just put it in a dryer stand, lean it up against something, but don't touch the grip. Yep. So, don't touch the grip. All right, so let's do one. Uh, I've got the one that is now not primed, right? I thought I had. Yeah, that will stand up. Huh? Perfect. Excellent. All right, so then we'll show. I'm actually going to put a small little. Some more paper towels. Yes, sir. All right, so what colors did you do there? I did, what was that, green, blue, and yellow? Uh-huh. No, orange? Yeah. Green, oh, yeah. green, orange, and blue hold the blue. Yes. Yeah. All right, More so. More blue. Now, we're going to do the same colors, but we are going to show you what happens when you don't prime it. And we honestly just primed... Uh, honestly, just prime those grips with like white Rust Oleum all primer something. I mean, it it's really not you know super special by any stretch. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try a different color, or same color. Oh, orange. orange is fine. Yeah. And I'm actually not going to, I'm not going to swirl this. I'm just going to let it. Let it sit. Yeah, why not? All right, cool. So I'm just going to. So when you do dip that, you want to turn it as yeah, you do it. Absolutely. Which I didn't get to explain the last time. But that helps you get the the swirl effect, rather than just dipping it straight down. Yep. You want a paper towel in here, sir? Yep. You want to get it? Get it. Perfect. Okay, I think that's most of it. Okay. Cool. All right. So you can see there, just doesn't quite pop as much. Um, and you can see, yes, I did more orange, and the orange honestly kind of looks a little bit like the cork there. You want to hand me that guy? And then, of course, you can also see that it takes another color out of the equation because there's no white, because there's no primer. So it's really kind of a personal preference there, you know? Now, from here, you can certainly put a color, I mean, I'm sorry, from here, you can certainly put a coat of Pro Coat, of Threadmaster. Uh, you can do a urethane coat. Um, yeah, so that is 
Magic Marvel in a nutshell. That's it. That's it. Maybe so. choose your colors a little more wisely than, than we do. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's fine. I'm gonna set this back here so it doesn't get all messed up. So you said for the primer, a Rust-Oleum? Yeah, I just have a, I just have a, regular, um, a regular white primer. You know, one of those, you know, you, you've seen it. It, mm -hmm. it sticks to everything, right? It's like, it's, it's suitable for glass, fiberglass, wood, uh, plastic, I any of that stuff. It's, yeah. it's really just a white primer base that, that's good to go. So, cool. That's it. Awesome. And of course, you can do real seats that way too. Yes. We've got a couple cool examples up here. Yep. Um, and we do have these available in, uh, in the arrow style real seat. Yeah, those um, are cool. Already magic marbled. Mm -hmm. and, and coated. And coated. Yeah. Yeah, so I know that was one of the questions up there. Um, what is the best way to seal a handle, um, of course, or a real seat after using magic marble on it? Um, probably recommend some type of automotive clear coat. Um, yes. There is a there is a 2K Max. It's called 2K Max, and that is something that um, that is something that you can use. So that's yeah. cool. Probably yep. pick it up Amazon hardware yep. store. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any yep. type of uh, you know, it, it kind of needs to be an automotive grade. It can't just be a yes. you know a regular a clear coat. Um, definitely helps if it's a little bit higher grade. Um, yeah, it's a little expensive. A little expensive it is. But it's yeah. worth it. Yep, 20, 25 bucks a can. Yes. But um, yep. yeah, great part. And I know, case. again, uh, Kurt turned us on to that, you know, one of the instructors. So he's the man. He cool. is the man. So cool. All right. You want to give something else away? Let's do it. I think we have our grand prize. That's it. And then. I'm going to see if I have that can of, of, yeah. of stuff here. So let's see. Our the grand prize winner. For the CRB Color Series uh, IS661 Rod Kit with the Magic Marble. And of course, we'll throw in some of the Color Preserver too. Uh, the winner is Zane Zane Zast? Zane Zaste? Sorry, Zane, if I pronounced your last name incorrectly. From Facebook, Zane, congratulations. And. What else we got? I know somebody asked to see the uh, finished rods that have the, the uh, marbling. So we'll show those real quick. I really like this gray, the black and gray with the white. Let's move this out of the way. This one turned out really good. And again, these rods were built by Victor Joseph. Very talented rod builder, lives here in Florida. Should get that guide wrap in there. This is a great example of doing marbling essentially as an under wrap. It's a really cool accent. And then we'll show the other one. This is on the metallic red MHX blank. So he's incorporated some red, green, a few darker colors as well. Marbling turned out really sharp. Awesome. All right. I did not have that can, but what we need to do is, I was going to mention about how to measure for that, right? Okay. So. Here. When you do want to put an under wrap down, what I tend to do is. Oh, you got to get that. Yeah, I was just going to show them this because it's you know it's a it's a large footprint, and I do have a black china marker here. So, imagine you have your piece of tape stuck to your china marker. Okay, so imagine you've got your guide mark, right? I tend to mark it at the ring. That's just you know, you kind of get in the habit of something, right? So then what you've got is you're going to mark your guide feet. So if you've got your, your ring marked, I do a little bit on that side. And then of course, I'm kind of like trying to hold it and do it at the same time. But 
you know, you'll mark here in front of the foot, and then you'll mark here on the back of the foot. So then I know that this is where I want all of my marbling to be. And if you want to do a sharp line with tape, you can do that. If, if you don't, you don't have to because remember, just as Victor did with that, it's just going to be in here and then he's going to wrap his guide feet mm -hmm. all over that. So it's a great option for those that don't want to do a thread, <clears throat> don't want to do a thread under wrap. They want to do a, you know, tie in the marbling from the other section of the blank, tie it in, um, and, you know, you can run it all the way up the whole rod on a big saltwater rod. Absolutely. Like if you're doing under wraps on an entire saltwater rod, you might as well do it, you know, use the marbling. So, and then depending on the grips, I mean, you know, if you've got cork four grips or you've got, you know, sections like uh, the, the smooth butt sections on the rear, you could marble those. I mean, anything, I think we talked about that earlier, any, any kind of harder grip or harder surface, um, you know, we were going to get Steve's coffee mug and, and marble it as a, as a joke, but I don't, you know, can't, can't be that hard on him this early. So, uh, yeah, you know, you can, you can pretty much do anything. So, um, yeah, what do you want to do? We still have, did you, did you do the main giveaway? I did, I did the grand prize. Right. Not the 10K. No, I know you didn't do the 10K. No. But you did the grand prize. I did. Zane, uh, Zane uh, who I cannot pronounce his last name, from Facebook. Nice. Nice. I was thinking Zast, Zast? Yeah, probably Zast, Zast. right? Zaste? Yeah. Zaste. I don't know. Zane, you got a cool name. I can't say I it. I was going to say, it's, the, the two Zs is just, that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, all right, so we've got those guys done. Do we have the quick rapid fire? Are we doing a, are we doing a fire round of questions? Yeah. Is that what we're doing? Let's scroll down. Jay, are we what doing the? We uh, are we doing that? Because I know we've had a couple of people say, "Oh, well, you didn't get to my question," or, you know, you guys take too long in between questions, or for each question. So we were gonna do, uh, you know, something from what the 1980s or the 1990s, and maybe do like the lightning round or something. I think that's what we were gonna do. Is that what we we're gonna do, Jay? All right. So, you want to go first, or you want me to go first? Um. Let's see. So I already got Scott's question. So, okay. yeah, you go first. I'll get, okay, I'll get Jens. Okay. How do you do a real seat and not mess up the threads? Uh, so just like this one, Jen, all uh, marbled down here, none on the threads. All you've got to do is do the tape method, as you've seen us do before. So just tape it off real nice and sharp there, run it out here, and you can actually Go all the way around and then twist it out here and use a, have like a pigtail kind of deal. And you can actually use that to dip the real seat. Boom. Uh, Steven, how long uh, does it take for magic marble to dry? I would give it at least probably 30 minutes to an hour to set it to the side, let it, let it cure, let it do its thing. There's probably going to be some water still left on it. So um, let it sit for at least an hour or so. Do one off. The, yeah, or you can do off. that. Just and knock then, the water off. Yeah, just knock the water off. And then, uh, yeah, come back in, and, and it doesn't take too long, but uh, about an hour. Perfect. Chris, what's the best way to seal cork after magic marbling? Uh, or just give it a layer of finish. Other than that, try to keep it thin. What's the best method to get the marbling level if the heat colors tend to blend? Um, use Pro Coat as a coat, or use the 2K Max. Uh, that's an automotive clear and a spray can. Um, you shouldn't have any issues with the finish not being level after you put all the additional colors on. So make sure it's level with the one color. Use some heat, make sure that level, boom, done. Then add it in and you should be good to go. Cool. Next. Uh, let's see, I already answered Dustin's question. Uh, Jason, um, he is asking about, can you use the wire chuck in conjunction with the clutch and the dryer? Soon, not yet but soon we will have that available. It will be an option. Nice. Grab that uh, gray color there, the gray rod for Colton there. He said, can you show some finished marble rods again? I missed it the first time. Yeah, I just did that a few minutes ago okay, while you're cool. going, so we're good. Um, Robert, all of us newbies to the rod building that don't build a lot of rods, how long will the pigments last on the shelf? A long time. 
I mean, keep them sealed up tight. Uh, you know, don't store them in the hottest garage that you've got. Uh, and I, I, I can't give you a true number, but long time. They're gonna they're gonna last a long time as long as you don't like crack that lid or, or something like that. So cool. Uh, let's see. Let me do Tyler's question. What are the best tools to use to get patterns? Assuming maybe you're referring back to the marbling. Um, hopefully you are. I used uh, the little probe. Um, these guys right here, the probe set of four, or um, I usually call them just picks. You know, they're like surgical picks or whatever. Yep. Um, or the spatula set also works great. You can also use, you know, just a standard mixing stick. Um, problem is it doesn't get really defined lines. Right. So you really want something that has a sharp point to it. Cool. All right. Last in the lightning round is going to be Tim. I'm sure you probably covered it, but do you have to sand the rod blank with a light grit sandpaper, 1,200 or 1,000, before you begin marbling? No. Tim, you're good to go, bud. Just like you would put finish over a decal or put finish on a rod blank or do anything like that, uh, I always make sure the rod blank is, you know, pretty clean. Uh, got, you know, oils from your hands and things like that. That's what's going to react with that finish. Uh, you could actually see there was a dimple in one of the marbling that we did. And it's probably because I grabbed it, left a little bit of, uh, you know, kind of oils from my hand. It mm -hmm. makes that finish want to run. So, Tim, no. You do not have to do it. You are ready to rock as long as that blank is clean. What do you think? Done. That was the lightning round, everybody. All right. So, thank you for joining us, but we're now gonna give the 10K giveaway. This is big. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, and uh, I can't thank you guys enough. Guys and girls of the rod building community, they made it happen. 10,000 members, we're up uh, 10,100 and some change, and we're growing. Yeah. I mean, they're coming in, you know, constantly. So thank you for telling, uh, you know, mom, dad, boyfriend, girlfriend, the whole, the whole lot of you. So, and we get a lot of a lot of feedback, get a lot of interaction, and that's the best part. If we just had 10,000 people there staring at each other, it would be no fun. So, yeah, we I mean, appreciate yeah, there's, that. There's multiple new posts made a day, um, and you get, you know, 10, 20 comments within a matter of no time, guys Absolutely. throwing suggestions and feedback, and yeah, some really cool stuff in there, yep. so. And uh, moving forward, we're gonna be doing some, some stuff with some pictures. So let's make cool. sure that everybody's got their iPhone and Camera's all cleaned out and ready to take some pictures of their cool rod builds. We love to see them. And uh, we'll be coming with that soon. All Since right. you're paying for it, you can give it away. Fair enough. I what see, are, what I are they see getting? a name pop up there That's now. That's it, boys. So. Thanks for giving us a name. We got it. Let's all go. right. So this is the limited edition RBS Pro with the all-black track and the four-spool uh, thread carriage. Congratulations. A little drum roll or something? No. <laughs> there it is. All right, cool. All right, all right, all right. Greg McVeigh. Greg McVeigh. Greg McVeigh. Nice. I think I've seen his name a few times in oh, there. Oh, so. yeah. I've, I've, I've recognized that name for Hopefully sure. Hopefully he is watching right now. Congratulations, Greg. Nice. Almost somewhere around that $500 value. It's great. I'm telling you, it's cool. And that is neat that we, uh, you did a, did a great job of making sure we had the, the black limited edition track because it's it's pretty sharp that's very limited edition <laughs> that's it it is now extremely limited edition because hunter's the man that's got it he's got the one in there and uh yeah greg mcveigh congratulations awesome. well what do you think it's 8 10 mom's got the hot pockets ready maybe um what else restate the winners how about that greg mcveigh congratulations on the 10k uh zane zast is the uh, the grand prize winner there with the color series rod kit magic marble which of course hunter's going to add in some flex coat um thread sealer too so you guys can do the strings and stuff and then of course aaron huffling is the runner up and jim eccles jr tonight so next show not sure we have a few we got a few things on the horizon we got some saltwater stuff coming up uh Ice season's coming up here pretty soon. It's mm -hmm. going to be here before you know it. I can't believe it's it's August. I got a I got a birthday coming up. Uh oh. I can feel it in my back already. <laughs> and uh, getting an old man. 
I don't know if I have as much gray hair as you, but you know. Hey, easy, easy. We'll see. It's the lights is Stay what it is. Stay away from the close-ups. That's it. So anyway, thanks everybody for joining uh, the show. Show 58? I think so. I think that's episode 58. If you haven't, everybody, trust me, it pays to be in the Mudhole Live Rod Builders Workshop. You can just ask Greg McVeigh and all the other winners that have been on the show. So thank you again for joining us for the Marveling 101. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully we did a little 101 and a half too. Um, what else? You got anything? I think that's it. Thanks for watching as usual. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. Till cool. next time. Absolutely. Till next time. So for Taylor and Guffy and Steve in the war room, Hoffman help us setting it up. We got Jay and Nikki Mintz on the ones and twos. As always, my left-hand man, Hunter McCamey. I'm Chris. Guys, thank you so much for joining us from behind the rod building bench here in the penthouse at Mudhole. See you next time. Take care. Bye.